My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how to's, and reviews. In today's video, we're going to continue work on our container shop building. This is my under $10,000 shipping container shop. So each of these boxes are about $3,500, and then this kit's a couple thousand dollars plus shipping so all in i think these ended up being about sixty six hundred dollars for the two of them and then we've got this kit here as well this is from Covermore. this is a 20 foot by 20 foot um, 78 inch height container popped off these metal bands on this box everything was pretty well laid out and organized inside the box we pulled out everything and organized it and made sure we had all the parts Instructions were pretty clear and helpful. Could have been a little bit more detail in some areas, but overall, uh, no issues with the instructions. We assembled the hoops as one unit. The instructions recommend using duct tape to cover all of the bolts to prevent tearing of the PVC fabric. We ended up having to move the shipping container a few inches. The instructions call for a 6,000 centimeter gap, and we weren't quite there, so we ended up scooting it over just a tiny bit. Then we set up the rails to go on top of the containers. On each end of the container we have a twist lock system with four bolts to tighten it down. When it comes to projects like this I would recommend installing everything loosely, tightening up the bolts hand tight and then coming back later and torquing everything down. Uh, for example on the corner you don't want to get those too tight yet until you have all the rest of the structure in place so it doesn't bind everything up. We've got four bolts and these angle brackets Sometimes the ribs on the roof and the ribs on the sides don't always line up, but these edge brackets, um, if you just pay attention where they go, uh, I believe these just keep the, the roof structure from pushing outward and uh, clamp it down to the roof. They do supply one roll of duct tape, but it uh, we quickly went through that and ended up using a second. If you're not careful while you're taping these, you can really use a lot of tape, so pay attention. Um, if, you're, if you're careful with the tape, the duct tape, you might only use one or two rolls. This project I would definitely recommend three people for. Um, not necessarily the whole thing, but definitely phases need three people and possibly even a fourth. We don't have the entire proper equipment. I would recommend a scissor lift or something similar to be able to go up and down and maneuver freely underneath the awning. If you have several people helping, one option too is to assemble the whole unit on the ground and then lift it up on the containers. Uh, there is a lot of benefits to doing that and it would be a lot safer in putting in these uh, lateral brackets to support it. I don't think you could put the um, PVC tarp on that way, uh, but I guess you, t you probably could if you had the manpower to lift up that whole weight all at once. Uh, it would be a much safer operation and not have as much work necessary above ground. Next we installed the lateral roof supports. Uh, these weren't too difficult. Um, again, it would be nice for a scissor lift for this, having the ability to walk back and forth. Uh, kind of hard to balance uh, some of these beams in place, but put all these up, tighten them down. We ended up making one pass, loosely putting them up, and then coming back a second pass and tightening everything down. Just worked out easier that way to hold everything. And then we also put tape on top of all the bolts and on the ends to make sure we didn't tear our, our fabric. I would recommend at least two ladders for this job, uh, maybe even three. If you got a tall enough A-frame ladder, you could probably reach up to the roof trusses and do a lot of the work that's needed in that way. That is if you don't have the proper equipment. Next up we installed our end wall. I thought this would be easier to install the end wall before the roof structure went in place. In retrospect, the way the roof is set up, you really could do this in either order. Um, so if you end up deciding to add the end wall, you could certainly do that after you already have the upper structure in place. Uh, in my opinion, I wouldn't have put this building up without the end wall. I think this end wall really makes the structure five times more usable and will help keep a lot of the elements out and the wind from blowing through this like a wind tunnel. The instructions do clearly say not to install this on a windy day. Uh, when we started installing this, we didn't feel like it was that windy, but it really, wind really picked up and it what made it for a really difficult time installing this, so we decided to hold off till the next day to install the roof structure. Up till this point, everything went pretty flawlessly. They followed the instructions, didn't have a lot of issues with this end wall. Definitely had some lessons learned I'd like to pass on. Um, with that top, we ended up putting it on pretty tight and that caused a lot of wrinkles and ripples along the top. So I ended up coming back after the fact and loosening one half and letting it sag a little bit and then restringing the other half 
and uh, ended up having about a four to six inch gap between the shipping container and the fabric and between the roof trusses and the fabric. And that made for a really nice uh, laid out end wall. Uh, looks really clean and nice as well as I think this is how it's intended to be installed. We will have to come back in here and lower these ratchet straps. They're a little bit too high currently because we ended up dropping that height down. Another helpful tip I would recommend is the use of a duct tape wrap around the end of the rope. This helps keep the rope from fraying and makes it easier to thread through these eyelets. Finally onto the top cover of this portion of this project. Uh, we did install this on upside down so we ended up having to flip that over. It wasn't a huge deal. We just pulled the back to the front and the front to the back instead of having to pull it all the way off again. It was a little bit of work to pull this up and over these beams, so we didn't want to have to redo that. I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to do this. We put the fabric down first and then tied off the front and back ends, followed up with the rails on each side, and then we, again, cinched everything up and tightened everything down. The eyelets for the rope need to be on the bottom side of the cover, and the cover more logo is facing inside. And then, same as the end wall, these ropes pull these tight towards the end walls and then it's got another loop end for the rope that ha allows it to wrap around the end wall and, and makes for a nice looking finish. All in all I think this is about a one day project for two to four guys. Keep in mind it needs to be a non windy day. I think having the wind would make this extremely more difficult. It certainly did for the end wall. We didn't have very much wind on the roof structure. I think we had about five to six mile an hour wind. And even then it was uh, grabbing our tarp a little bit occasionally. So it's about a one day project. If you take your time, it might be a two day project. Um, and that does not include setting containers. As you can see here, we largely use the skid steer to uh, lift man up and down. Uh, I, again, I would not advise that. I don't think that's the safest method. It's the method we used to get the job done, working with what we had. But there are safer tools to accomplish the same task.